Welcome to Flow. My name is Andrew Coleman, and today we're going to be going through how to use Flow to transform organizations and how you can use Flow to scale Agile. As with all of our other books and presentations and slide decks, Everything is covered by a Creative Commons Attribution No Derivatives 4.0 International License. Feel free to use it. Uh, just make sure you give us proper attribution, including our copyright at the bottom, where you would add the additional phrase used with permission. So in advance, thanks for doing that for us. This slide deck is a result of some conversations that we had uh, during the end of 2019 with various clients and stakeholders and it became very clear very quickly that there's a lot of confusion between scaling, transformation, rollout, which is a form of scaling, and governance and a lot of stakeholders tend to just group all those together and so I took the view that okay maybe it's easier to unpack these a little bit and to be able to help you understand where uh, scaling and transformation overlap how to be successful with both my view is, is that if you attempt to scale without transforming, then your risk of failure for your scaling efforts increases, and it could actually increase exponentially. Uh, they have a saying in software, or, and I'll soften this up a little bit. It's basically, uh, don't scale lousy code. <laughs> okay? Uh, it's the same concept. If you try to scale something that's not fully functioning already at the team level and if it's dysfunctional at that level when you scale it uh, you're just going to get uh, exponential headache heartburn and uh, it's it's going to just not be a good situation at all and it's really tough to scale agile or anything without doing the parallel work at the same time to transform the organ organization and its culture. If that work isn't done, then you're risking the investment that you're making into scaling. So we're going to go through that in these next slides. And I've pretty much put it into tool set and mindset, doing versus being, and uh, we're gonna. I put scaling is more a tool set. I'm not saying there's no mindset there, but it's mostly a tool set. And transformation is more mindset, but I'm not gonna say that there isn't some structure that you have to do. So uh, we're gonna go through those in the following slides, and that's primarily what this entire presentation is about. As I mentioned in the last slide, you have to do both well, both scaling, which is more a tool set view, and transformation, which is more a mindset view. And we could discuss and argue and chat about, okay, you know, what's the difference between the two? We're going to do that, but uh, they do overlap each other, so it's not a perfect line like I drew there in the middle And that's why it gets sort of fuzzy at the bottom <laughs> because they do bleed into each other now the two uh, skill set needed to Implement each of these sometimes are competing competences uh, or competencies whichever way you say that uh, since both management and leader skills, leadership skills are required. So on the tool set side, when we're when I'm talking about tool set and 
you can agree or disagree with me. Those are primarily the agile methods. Scrum, even though they talk a lot about mindset and even agile talks a lot about mindset, uh, it's they teach you more the doing. This is how you do Scrum. If you go to the training, primarily, you know, they teach you the Agile Manifesto and things like that. But when it gets right down to it, they're showing you here's the patterns that you go through, here's the rituals that you go through, or all of the planning things that you do for Scrum, all the meeting structure that you have. And many times I, I hear Agilists talk about doing Agile versus being Agile. But to me, many times it feels like that they're trying to do external behavior modification and using extrinsic motivators uh, that may or may not be sustainable. It depends on the leadership and how forceful that leadership may or may not be. And when you scale, so if you use Scaled Agile Framework, otherwise known as Le uh, SAFE or LESS, which is Large Scale Scrum or Nexus or any program level Agile methodology that's out there, those only magnify the situation that you're going to have at the team level. And if you've only done a team uh, tool set view at the team level, you have a very, very, very high risk of failing, and the scaled methodologies are going to only amplify what's going wrong. Okay? And a tool set view, as I mentioned already, they look at the structure, the rituals, the disciplines, and it's really, in many cases, uh, when I'm chatting with organizations, the first thing they want to know is, okay, what tool are we going to use? Are we going to use Jira? Are we going to use MS Planner? Are we going to use Trello? Or, or, you know, what tool are we going to use? And when that happens and when that's the immediate reaction of the people in the organization, then they are doing Agile. They are not being Agile. And they're also having to balance the needs of the leadership because the leadership wants reports and they live in a reports-driven environment. Now, here's where the leadership could actually help. And when we talk about mindset, it's, it's three things that happen in every organization without exception. That's friction, confusion, and underperformance. And everything else requires leadership. And so the whole idea of flow is that it begins with leadership. So it can be leadership at the personal level. It can be leadership at the team level. It can be leadership at the product, program, process, line manager level. Or it can be leadership at the executive level and the portfolio level and above that deals with that. And when we're talking about cascading vision here, we'll get into that a little bit later. Most companies have some ability to cascade the vision throughout the organization from the highest levels down to the teams and individuals. I've seen very few organizations that have mastered creating a feedback loop that links back up to the next level above from the individual to the team to the project to the program, to the portfolio, to the executives. Making that link back in most organizations doesn't exist. And even if they have it, it's so jammed full of information that in the end it just looks like noise to the executives. And so we have a way of doing cascading vision with the link back that helps reduce the noise for the executives so hopefully they can focus on the things that are going to make the biggest difference for helping people move from just doing Agile to being Agile. Mindset also looks at internal behavior in the transformation as far as, and we look at it from a transformation perspective, and we look at the intrinsic motivators, uh, autonomy, mastery, and purpose at the individual level, for example. And, and if we do those right, those are sustainable. 
whereas external behavior modification over on the tool set side may or may not necessarily be sustainable, but in most cases, from what I've seen, if you take the agile uh, ambassadors or change agents or whatever you call it, if you take them out of the equation, everything just falls flat and everybody goes back to their comfort zone and goes back to what they were doing before. In transformation, it's train, coach, and mentor, train, coach, and mentor in every area of the organization, whether it's the individual area, the team area, the product program process area, or the portfolio executive area. All of those have to go together. And mindset is also about the culture of the organization. What's the values? What's the attitudes? And in the end, beliefs drive behavior, not tools. If tools are driving the behavior, that's like the tail wagging the dog. And you'll get what you measure, and no one's going to be happy. As we're looking at tool set and mindset, uh, there's a couple things that I haven't really included here on this slide. Uh, two additional things would be rollout and governance. Rollout needs to happen both on the toolset side and the mindset side, and governance has to happen on the toolset side and the mindset side. So it almost becomes a matrix here, but I didn't want to draw it that way. On the tools view, and I've seen out on the internet a lot of uh, agile colleagues have put things out there on you start with your tools and process, expand it out to practices, go to principles, values, and then mindset. And you'll see versions of that. Again, if you're starting with tools and processes in the center, the tools drive the behavior. And so that could really hamper and hinder what you're trying to do as an organization. And most organizations that are just starting with Agile do not have the skill, the experience, the battle scars, the understanding to even be able to make a proper choice on which tool if any, that they should get, okay? And so uh, when you're looking at it from a, a tool set perspective, many times they're coming from program management. They'll come from a, a program management worldview where we have our processes, we're going to follow them. It's a stage gate process, and we'll live and die by it, and... Uh, that means that that will put a constraint on the organization that it could be argued either way. Some people would probably argue that that would be a good thing. The agile pur purists would argue the opposite and just say, what? Why would you do that? Okay. Now, on the mindset side, you have to start with the mindset in the middle. Okay, and then from the mindset, you build your values. From the values, you create the principles. From your principles, you create the practices. And then eventually you can choose your tool set, okay, for your tools and processes. And so implementing a mindset requires leadership skills and how you signal that throughout the organization. If you have leaders who are only talking the talk, and not modeling the behavior and walking the talk, it will be a complete, utter nightmare to try to get the organization to do a transformation, to do a rollout, to try to scale, uh, or even try to govern it <laughs> in the end is going to create a lot of dissonance, noise, anxiety, and chaos and division within the organization. So 
when we're looking at this, if there are people out there that are familiar with the Agile Onion, um, there could be arguments to use the one on the left. Personally, I prefer the one on the right because if you're not in parallel, working with the people's mindsets and helping them obtain new values and helping them learn new principles and live it, then their practices, whatever they do, they're going to be feeding into a tool and the practices will just be almost like zombie agile. So you need to be able to, in parallel, do both mindset and tool set at the same time and we're only differentiating them in this slide deck on transformation in order to help people understand the difference between just doing Agile on the left versus being Agile on the right. And ultimately, if the, if the executives want the results where you're either increasing revenue Get, including getting to the market faster or saving costs or getting rid of or mitigating risk or doing the right thing, then you have to do both. If you only do the stuff on the left, which a lot of the consulting companies and agile coaches will come in and say, well, you, you do this, this, and this, and this, follow these structures and everything's going to be great. And my experience is, is that you have to do both. And if you don't do both, it's going to be extremely challenging for those doing the transformation, as well as those that are trying to go through the transformation. And it will be a long, painful process. There are four lenses on transformation, and I hinted at those in the other slide. There's the individual area, there's the team area, product, and in product I include program, so all program management, uh, process management, including everything that the line managers do. Uh, agile coaches will live in this box, down in the team box, uh, you're gonna have the scrum masters in the team, and, and or team level facilitators, depending on how you set your agile up, okay? And so those are the first three boxes. In the organization box, I include everything from portfolio management upward, including that along with directors, VPs, C-level, and so on. And so there are, these are the four lenses through which I look at transformation. And by the way, you cannot do a transformation and only work in one or two of the boxes without touching the other two or three boxes. It's just impossible. So if anyone is out there and they think, well, I can just transform my teams at the team level and I'll just delegate it downwards and it will be great. Uh, if you're not transforming the behaviors, the mindsets, and the patterns in the other three boxes, and you've only focused on team, you have just increased your risk for failure by multiple, multiple factors. So we're going to be using this pattern throughout the rest of this presentation. 